Eric, have you seen this? Martin, Cy Bradley. Yeah, I'm just doing the recon for Cass Pats. Do you want to talk to me about this first sprint? Hello? Martin? Nathan, Cy Bradley, YouTube. Cy, you, you know, you, I do the recon videos on YouTube. Hey, Sherpa Dave, Cy here from uh, YouTube. Dave? Dave? He's gone. Have you ever seen this kind of start in a BMX race? So that's exactly what the start of this stage is going to be like. It's nuts. We've got this marina sprint for a prime first across the line and the fastest through segments straight from the gun within the first kilometer. Get that for a start. Now let's take a look at the distances of this race and also the preems. A and B riders, it's 46.6 kilometers. That's two full laps. C and D riders, it's 35.7 kilometers. That's approximately one and a half laps. You guys are gonna finish on the aqueduct climb reverse. A and B riders, your preems. You've got the marina sprint reverse times two. So that's in the lead in and at the end of lap one. And that is for first across and the fastest through segments. You've got the pave sprint reverse times two. That's first across the line only. The aqueduct climb reverse times two. That's also first across the line only. The petit climb forward again times two. That's first across the line and the fastest through segment. C and D, your preems. Marina sprint reverse, you've got two of those, one right at the start and the lead in, and also lap one, and that's first across the line and the fastest through segment. The pave sprint reverse, times two, first across the line only. The aqueduct climb reverse, currently that's time one for first across the line. There is talk from the WTRL that they may also add in points, uh, additional points as you cross that for the the finish line as well. The Petit Climb, that's just one, first across the line and the fastest through segment. What I'll also do is I'll leave a link in the description below for the recon notes and should there be any changes, I'll update those before the event. So let's get in and have a look at the course in a bit more detail and that crazy, crazy start. So as always guys, just before we get into the recon at the end, I'm going to share with you my predicted race times and also we'll have a chat about bike choice and also the power-ups available. So stay tuned for that, but for now, let's dive in. So as I said, this is the most ridiculous start I think we've seen in a ZRL and I think I mean that in a good way. So don't take that as a criticism, WTRL or Zwift. But we have a sprint and the sprint segment starts and we 800 meters into this particular race. So you leave the pens, head towards the marina, you'll see the marker 0.8 kilometers, that's where the sprint stay starts and it's 200 meter dash around the blind bend to the right for the take those first segment points for the fastest through and first across the line. This is absolutely where those fastest through points are going to be taken. I simply do not see those fastest through points being taken on the second time round because we're all going to be tired from the two climbs and the other sprints and the already 23 plus kilometers we've already covered. So hold on to your hats, make sure you're warm. This is one fast start. But don't worry, because soon after that sprint, you've got 10 kilometers of fairly flat roads before we get to the second sprint of the day, which is gonna be the pave sprint. But as always, just be aware that after that sprint, you may get some riders just pushing on still after the sprint, just to break it down. I don't particularly see that happening this week. It's just too flat between those two sprint sections for that to happen, but it's just something to be aware of. It will be quick. All right, so the pave sprint is going to come around about 11 and a half kilometers. You'll see the green marker just as you come onto the cobbles here to start this segment. Now, it is quite a long sprint, but remember, there's no fastest through. It's first across the line only. It is quite a long sprint, just over 300 meters for this one, and it is on cobble, so it is quite tough. So it's all about positioning, surfing those wheels until that last minute when you take the victory and maximize those points for the first across the line. Just be cautious again after the sprint that the pace might continue to be high, they might cause some splits. I don't think too many riders are gonna be pushing on here because shortly after we're gonna get onto the aqueduct comp. 
So as I said, shortly after the Pave Sprint Reverse, we're going to head towards the Aqueduct Com Reverse as well. It's a tricky com, this one. The com itself is only around about 400 metres, just as you start to come onto the sort of the concrete bridge section. But actually, the work is done before that. There's about 900 metres before that, which is draggy. And this is quite often where you will get riders pushing on just to cause those brakes, line it out and give themselves plenty of room ready for this final section on this kicker. Now, if you do make it amongst the front few riders on the actual concrete section of the aqueduct itself, just hold on, sit in the wheels until you've taken that right hand turn and you can see the banner only 200 meters in front of you. This is where you've got to dig deep, push on, basically like a sprint after that little climb. So as you take this left turn and head towards the Petit Com, the first kilometre and a half is fairly rolling. It does ramp up to about 5%, but it generally goes between 1% and 3% elevation. And it is absolutely draftable for this first kilometre and a half. It's as you start to approach the switchback that the bulk of the work and bulk of the elevation starts to appear. So this is where you've got to push on, dig deep about another kilometre to the top till you get to the banner, hold on to those wheels or push on the front to break that group down and maximise those points. Now once you cross the banner you're going to carry on around the road, take a right hand turn and head down the bank back towards the marina sprint. So the top of the Petit Com comes around about kilometer 20 on that first lap and then the lap itself is 23.3 so you can see you've got 3.3 kilometers there or thereabouts of descending until you get to that second marina sprint or if you're on the second lap indeed the finish. So this is an ideal spot to use the anvil power up should you get it. Don't use it on anywhere else except on the, on the descent, but this could be the ideal place to extend that lead, open those gaps and drop them for that finishing sprint. So that's it, that's the end of the lap. A and B riders, get yourselves going, you've got another lap to do the same points as before, except this time, the final time around for the marina sprint, it's finish line points only, and of course, arms in the air to take that victory. Now, C and D riders, when you get to this point on the first lap, you've got half a lap to go, and don't forget, your finish is on the aqua.com, so go out and check that section again. Little kicker, right hand turn, and then it's flat to the finish, all the way to the banner for your finish line points. So while we're talking about power-ups, we've got three, as always I hear you say. The anvil that we've already discussed, which is going to increase your weight and improve your descending. We have the burrito, which is going to make you and everyone around you undraftable. And then we have the draft. And again, could be used on that early section of the petty com just to hold on to those riders and then dig deep and hang on over the top. All right, so in terms of bike choice, I would be going for something as aero as possible. Personally, there is some argument to go for something a bit more climber focused, if that's a particular weakness, or even if you think, you know what, I can use a few more watts on the longer, flatter sections, I can hang on in there, I'm a really good drafter, and I want just a little bit more help when climbing, then maybe that'd be the choice for you. But personally, I think the most aero setup is the best option to go for. So I'll be going for the Tron on this particular occasion but again I'll leave a link to Eric's pages over at Zwift Insider there's a particular plot graph that I use when deciding which bike I'm going to use for a particular stage or race so go and check that out so in terms of recon rides I will leave a link to some of those below I know the team at Racing Without Borders are probably putting a recon on Friday night we did one last week for the Flatlands Loop which was absolutely fantastic great fun Unfortunately, or fortunately, some real hitters turned up to that, so it was a much tougher ride, but we got all the weekend to recover, so that wasn't a problem. And then, of course, on Saturday morning, you have the team from Electric Spirit. They'll be putting on their recon ride. They do a slightly shortened version of this particular course, which is no bad thing on a Saturday morning before the Tuesday. So, as always, guys, thank you for watching the video. I hope you find it useful. Thank you to everyone that sub subscribed. As I said, I was hoping we'd have hit 1,000 subscribers, and I think at this check, we're on about 1,200 subscribers, so it's much appreciated. What a fantastic community we have, and I'll see you on the roads of Zwift, hopefully later this week.